Hey guys, uh, tonight I'll be talking about my favorite Python packages for creating user-friendly graphical interfaces. And on November fucking fools, grab your Raspberry Pi, since tonight we're doing some good old-fashioned bare metal assembly. Uh, the topic of discussion tonight is um, bare metal multi-core programming on the Pi. I'll be using my uh, Pi Zero 2, which is flexing the uh, quad-core ARM Cortex A53 processor. But this should work for uh, any Pi. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure about the Pi 1, but uh, pretty much all Pis have the uh, four core processor. How we do this is actually uh, pretty easy, especially compared to like the RP2040 with that weird uh, kind of like that six stage uh, chain process. Uh, this is actually pretty easy. So each core has a mailbox and this is just an address that we can write to and it's expecting us to write a uh, entry point to that address. So when uh when your Pi first boots up and your uh, main core starts executing your kernel image, uh the three other cores are kind of in the sleep state and they're uh, they're just checking this mailbox. So like um yeah, let's write some sudo code. Uh so let's say we have like the sleep symbol and uh first thing we're going to do is like wait for an event. So um to kind of like shake the core awake, we need to send it an event. And then once it kind of like, once it's awake, it's going to, uh, it's going to load a, the uh, address from the mailbox into a register. So like, say we have like an address mailbox and um, it will then say, it will then check uh, this address and say, okay, like, is there anything inside this mailbox? And if there isn't, it's going to, um, it's just going to go back to what it was doing before. So it'll uh, go back into the sleep state. So branch if equal, if it's zero, back to sleep. So uh, yeah, this is just kind of like the loop. Uh, you wake up the core, it checks the mailbox. If there's nothing inside it, it goes back to sleep. But if there is something inside it, it will... Um, It'll jump to that address, so we'll just move that address into its program counter, and that's how you. That's basically how you wake up the core. This is. Uh, I haven't looked at the code myself, but I imagine this is. Uh, this is what the bootloader. This is what the boot stage, um, kind of, uh, has on these cores, and this mailbox is going to be different for each core. So the two addresses we'll need, we'll need a uh, need the address of our GPIO. So our GPIO is uh, at the physical address 0x3f2, uh, followed by a bunch of zeros. And then our, uh, our mailboxes are um, at this address. Uh, what is it? 4000 zero, 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 and then it was 9C. Yeah. So that's our mailbox. And, uh, well, that's the mailbox for core one. And the mailboxes for core two and three are um, at an offset of six. So each mailbox is an offset of 16. So each core actually has four mailboxes each. But um, we just care about the ones for the entry points. So after that, um, we can start our uh, start enabling our GPIO. I've already covered uh, bare metal GPIO programming for the Pi on this channel, but uh, just to recap, uh, I have the documentation pulled up. So we have our uh, function select registers, which is how we enabled a, a pin as an output, and then we have our uh, set and our clear uh, registers. So like. If we have an output, we will like, let's use a good example. So, um, and the pins I have uh, wired up to my Pi is, uh, they're pin 21, pin 20, pin 16, and pin 12. So, uh, like if we need to enable, uh, pin 16 and pin 12, um, each pin has, uh, three bits within this register. And then we just need, we just need to enable the lowest pin. And the lowest bit. So like for uh, pin 12 to enable this as an output, we need to enable bit 6. And to enable pin 16 as an output, we need to enable, uh, we need to set uh, bit 
18. So, uh, yeah, this would look like um, load into register zero, uh, the Jeep IO address. And then we uh, we'll just move one into R1, shift that over uh, 18 times, and then to uh, what was it, the sixth bit, we'll add uh, 64 to that, since that's uh, six bit and binary. And then we'll just store this. Um, what was it? This was okay. So that was the second register so we store that at um gpio base at an offset of four and then similar story for the um uh pin 20 and pin 21 uh where did it go here we go um yeah this is actually easier we just move a nine into here and then we store that register into um, at an offset of eight. To uh, actually uh, set the pin high, we'll need to um, we just set that up. So like yeah, when you um, this output register right here, uh, our act output set, we need to set. Let's say if we're setting the twenty first pin high, we'll need to set the twenty first bit. Uh, so we'll move um, one into R one, shift that over. Uh, 21 times and then to actually set that pin high we'll store that value in uh, our GPIO at an offset of 28 uh, 28 let's see uh, yeah 1c28 and um, yeah let's uh, let's make it a little delay function let's make this a loop and we'll do this for um, we'll do this for each core so let's uh, let's have a loop and first we'll set the pin high and then uh, let's just um so let's say we have like a delay function so like it'll delay for like a half a second and then to uh, set the pin low we uh store the same value but in a uh, in the clear register which is an offset of uh, 40 offset of 40 so and then we'll go back to delay and then we'll uh loop back around and uh yeah that's our little loop and for our delay function let's just say um we'll move one well, yeah let's do let's use r2 let's move one to r2 and then shift that over um, 21 is a good number and then we'll say while not zero uh, we'll subtract one from R2 if I can type and then branch if not equal back to the while loop if it's uh, not zero, and then we'll uh, go back to our uh, whatever uh, our link register is. So this is our little delay function, and then um, yeah, I'm satisfied with this. Let's uh, let's start writing some uh, core specific code. So uh, since I have four LEDs hooked up to uh, four different pins. I think it makes sense that uh, each core kind of blinks a uh, different LED. So let's say that each core has a different value in uh, register one. So it jumps into this loop, but each core uh, has a different uh, register. I mean, sorry, different pin that it's uh, controlling. So let's say uh, let's say this first one is uh, let's just call this core zero. And this is where our uh, code is originally executing from. So, oh uh, yeah, um, let's kind of clean this up a bit, and then we'll, uh, yeah, we'll need to reload our GPIO uh, when we jump to the other cores. So let's just load that back into register zero, and then uh, after.
after that we'll just branch to the loop and I like my spacing so that now we can uh, let's copy this I know mouse on knee of him cringe and then we'll have to do this for a uh, all four cores. Jesus Christ. Uh, let's see. Core one. And then core one. Let's say we're using pin 20. Core two. We're using pin 16. And core three. We're using pin 12. So now. Um, whatever core function you start at. You load the GPIO. Into register zero. And then you load. Um your bit number, your pin, and register one, and then you jump to the loop and do this little uh, blink on and off with uh, whatever pin that core has. So now we need to actually write to those mailboxes. So after we enable our GPIO pins as outputs, we'll need to load the uh, load the mailbox address so we have our mail address and first we're going to um, send we're gonna wake up core one which means that we'll need the address of the core one function right here which means we get to use one of my favorite arm instructions of all time which is ADR so ADR uh, this just adds an offset to a relative offset to the program counter so this is a great way of getting uh, physical uh, concrete addresses in position independent code. So we'll just um, add the address of core one to register one. Um, so register one will contain our address to that entry point. And then we'll store our one into uh, the mailbox at an offset of zero since this is the um this is the address for core one and then we'll do the same thing for the uh other cores we'll uh adr r1 and then core two and then store that uh at an offset of 16 and then again for core three we load the entry point and then uh, store that an offset of 32. And after all that is done, we can send an event. So now this will uh, shake up all the three cores. They'll wake up. They'll uh, check in their mailboxes. And happy birthday. They got an address and they'll uh, jump to that address as their entry point. All right, so now let's save, and then we can assemble, and then link. And then, as always, you'll need to uh, you'll need to name this uh, kernel seven dot image. Uh, for some reason, I always feel like I misspell kernel. And uh, now you just uh, throw this on your SD. Here I have my uh, Pi beautifully wired up. So uh, each LED is uh, hooked up to a different pin. So now I uh, just pop in the SD card and then power on the Raspberry Pi. And uh, yeah, there you have it. Uh, each LED is being uh, powered on and off by a different core on the Raspberry Pi. So yeah, that's uh, bare metal multi-core programming on the Raspberry Pi, uh, pretty straightforward.